Now, a lot of candidates don't think about this, but communication is also a very, very important aspect. A lot of great candidates, they just don't jump into implementation right away. I've seen a lot of candidates when I ask them questions, like the reverse words in, uh, reverse words in a string question, they see the problem and they just kind of jump into it right away. They, they make some assumptions but they don't clarify that with the interviewer. And that's bad because now you you have this little box that you're operating in and no one else knows what box you're operating in until the end of it, right? So for great candidates, I would expect them to ask clarifying questions. And you might even use this as a checklist. First thing is edge cases. Are you thinking about what happens when the list is empty? You know, white spaces white spaces around prefixes, things like that. So those are edge cases. Scope, what is the scope that you have to handle? So what does that mean? So for example, what is the length, the maximum length of, of the string that you have to handle, right? That is scope. Do you have to support Unicode? That's also scope, right? Is it, can you fit everything within a single machine? Things like that, right? Third thing is use case. So a use case could be, how, how would someone approach this? Are they gonna give you one string and then do multiple operations on that string? Is that one use case? Or do you wanna provide a static library where someone can just import your library and use your string manipulation library uh, as, as they go? Three things, right? Fourth thing is future extensions. Have you, do you think about how do you extend your library in the future? How do you make it easy such that the next engineer who comes on board can easily extend your code or your library? Fifth thing is tests. What sort of tests should you write? I see a lot of, uh, a lot of great candidates. They actually write the tests up front before writing a single line of code. So that is great for several reasons. That can help you check that you're solving the right problems. Now that can be your input to the end of your coding solution. So you can test that it actually does what it's supposed to do. And the last thing is performance requirements. So that means what is your storage complexity here? What is your storage requirement? Where's your time requirement, right? All these different things. Uh, so that kind of plays into performance requirements. Another thing is great candidates should demonstrate careful choosing of method, class name, parameters, variables, right? So these are very important thing and it shows, it communicates to your interviewer that you're very careful. That is caring about quality, right? Because on the other hand, if they do not demonstrate careful choosing of method or class name, it gives the interviewer the impression that the candidate is not very careful and they might need more help or handholding in refactoring the code in the future, all of which are bad signs as a, as a candidate. Now, in an interviewing session, you also want to communicate, right? So interviewers are trying to understand, will you be a good teammate? They want to get a feel from you to an answer the question above. If a candidate is stuck, for example, the interviewer wants to know how do you get yourself unstuck? Are you gonna keep probing on that problem until you find a solution? Or do you kind of let the interviewer know and say, hey, you know, I'm kind of stuck a little bit here. Can you give me some hints to proceed? Right, those are really, really important skills as well. Now, if you think about an actual working situation, when you're stuck on a problem, typically you would ask your coworker, hey, I'm stuck on here. What are some ways, you know, I can, you kind of bounce ideas off of them. What are some ways you can unblock yourself? So the interviewer wants to know, do you know how to appropriately seek help to unblock yourself? And then when you run into issues, you should address that early. So for example, if you're writing some code and you realize, oh, there's this edge case that I haven't thought about, even, even though we spent like five, 10 minutes coming up with all the different cases, but there's this one edge case that I haven't thought about. Is that a bad thing? Typically, that's not a bad thing. That's actually pretty good. 
right? When you run into issues and you address that early, that means that the interviewer is aware that you're thinking about all these different problems. And then you let the interviewer know that once you encounter those problems, you're actually capable of resolving them uh, appropriately. So that's very important. So these are the critical work behaviors that are strong signs of a good teammate. And at the end of the day, for an interview, what they're really looking for is, are you going to be a good teammate? Now, we, if you have that in mind and you start tackling backwards, then I believe that's gonna help you structure your interview performance much more creatively. Okay, so another thing is communication. We wanna talk about trade-offs, right? Space versus time, readability versus optimization accuracy versus, versus probability, right? The candidate and interviewer should engage in a two-way com communication, conversation, right? It's not just, hey, can you solve this problem? And then the candidate just keeps coming up, you know, all, all the information on their own. It should be a two-way conversation. Determine what are some reasonable trade-offs, what can be done better, what can be improved, what can be ignored for the sake of time. Right? That should be a conversation with the interviewer. You can ask them all these different questions. They'll let you know, and then that will help you inform a much better uh, session. If you think about it, typically, if you're working with a coworker, you want to be able to have a conversation. Right? It could be some things that you don't know about that you, you know, your, your, your coworker can fill in on, like trade-offs or things that you might have overlooked. So these are good situations for you to show that you are able to work with another coworker. So great candidates should have a good idea of what coat smell is, uh, what bat smell is. Uh, typically, if a candidate cannot finish on time as well, a good interviewer will point out early and either simplify and reduce scope. So this is for more junior candidates. If they cannot finish on time, Right, the good interviewer will kind of see that and then point it out. But a more senior candidate should be able to figure out if they're able to kind of finish the implementation on time. And if they're not able to, they can raise that up and say, hey, you know, I think the scope here is really too big. Can I just implement these sections first? And then if I have more time, I will get to implementing the other parts of it. Right, so that's communication. Those are skills that you should have. And those are skills that interviewers are looking for.